Hello and a very, very warm welcome to all my fellow colleagues, to the wonderful parents and dearest children. I'm Neha Varma, the senior psychologist at Kinderpass. And today I'm here to address two issues which are very close to my heart. One is actually lack of availability of professionals in our field in various areas. And the second is how schools can help in inclusive education to ensure that all the children get some level of education in a regular setup. So let's talk about both these things today. Now, according to reports from the Indian Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, the country needs about 13,000 psychiatrists. But what we have is one psychiatrist for about 2 lakh people. So you can imagine the gap. You can imagine the lack of availability of a good professional to help. And the same is the case for clinical psychologists, special educators, counselors, occupational therapists. You just name the profession and we see that there's a lot of lack, lot of people that we want but are not available. As I had mentioned, with regard to other men mental health professions, the ratio is even worse. We need about 20,000 clinical psychologists and there are just a thousand available. Now here, one thing that we need to remember is that we're talking about registered licensed professionals. We're not talking about the professionals who are still in the process of studying or who have not qualified to a level where they can be registered and licensed. So this is officially people who have registered and are practicing. For psychiatric social workers, the requirement is about 35,000, but just 900 are available. For psychiatric nurses, we need about 30,000, but have just 1,500. So you can imagine with this lack of professionals, there is a complete chaos in the entire ecosystem. When parents are willing to approach, they, are, they want uh, help for their children, but there are long queues, long lines of wait. They have no idea whom to approach and things just keep breaking down. So that is an area where I think all of us together need to really regulate and help. Early identification and early intervention has been something that I actively promote. I have seen how much difference even two or three months can make to the life of a child. So that becomes one of the major reasons that I actively interact with a lot of school counselors where they are available. Otherwise, it's teachers and principals uh, whom we need to reach out to. And what I find is that it is not the principal and the teachers who are reluctant or hesitant. It is basically their lack of resources, lack of professional guidance, not having someone on board to on a day-to-day -day basis to help out, which stops them from uh, providing or taking up children with uh, you know, learning disability or ADHD or some developmental delays. Although there are other schools that I've come across where we even have integration of visually impaired children or children with physical disabilities. So it's completely, I think, dependent on what resources are available. The school has huge setups, so they're willing to share that as long as someone shows them what needs to be done. Someone is there to hold their hand and to help them out with children who have special needs. But the scenario, again, is not so bright. So despite the CBSC guidelines, which makes it mandatory for schools to have counselors on board, only 3% private schools, as reported by a survey done by ASOCHAM, have actual appointment records. And the same situation applies to government schools as well. It's not like all government schools are fairly well equipped with counselors or special educators 
which is a requirement. If we're looking at inclusive education of children with special needs, we do need to give them the right kind of environment. That is essential. We cannot just send them to school for the sake of sending them and expect results. That is not going to happen. There are two primary conditions that I come across very frequently, learning disability and ADHD. And in both cases, what comes into the forefront is, of course, poor academic performance is one. But usually the child is labeled as someone who's very naughty. Anything that goes wrong in the classroom is the fault of that particular child. We don't realize that the reason for those behaviors, the reason the child is acting out or not delivering the kind of results despite putting in six to 10 hours of work is probably because there is something that stops him from doing that. So there are a lot of studies regarding learning disability and I would like to share a few of them. One of them was conducted at the LTMG hospital in Mumbai and it really reveals that out of the almost 2,225 children who visited the hospital for certification for any kind of disability, 640 were diagnosed with having a special learning disability, specific learning disability, SLD. These children came from all strata of society. So again, the economic background does not really matter in this situation. And the referral, of course, as I had mentioned, was poor academic performance, whether it was highlighted by the teachers or the parents. That is how usually these uh, children are identified. And we need to get it to a level where the identification is as early as possible so that we can help them to our best. Another such study was conducted in Kerala in 1997, and it revealed that nearly 10% of the child population that was tested had some or the other developmental language disorder. Eight to 10% had learning disability. So it is a huge number. A percentage of about 10 of total is huge. So 10 out of every 100 child has either a developmental disorder or a learning disability growing, going forward. In fact, another study, once again done in Kerala, showed that the incidence rate was almost 16% for learning disability. And that is prevalent, not just all over India, but worldwide. These are statistics that reflect what is happening out there. And there are so many of these children, so many parents, in fact, who need our help, who don't know what is going on or what is wrong. And awareness is a key. They need to be educated about their rights, about the fact that their child is not just stubborn, headstrong, um, oppositional, uh, you know, someone who likes fighting or who doesn't enjoy listening to parents. Uh, you know, so all these negative thoughts need to be driven out, replaced with more positive emotions, understanding of the child and empowering the child to the best of our abilities. And I'm sure all of you agree with me on that. According to the SOCHAM Health Committee Chairman, Dr. B.K. Rao, the most common problems children face nowadays are scholastic performance pressure, lack of interpersonal communication, nuclear families, and failure in relationships. Lack of counseling as at the right time is causing a lot of trouble. The survey also highlights that making counseling available to every secondary school child will result in a dramatic reduction in student stress and lead to improvement in their behavior. So this is something we need to actively promote and solve for. Dr. D.S. Rawat, again from Asacham, also mentioned that despite growing demand, the role of school counselors within the Indian context remains ambiguous. There is a need for counselors for adolescents as children are exposed to all kinds of influences 
while their communication with their parents is very limited. As the charm is of the view that there should be at least three to four counselors per school. We're looking at just one per school. So what happens is that if you're looking at a school with a basic strength of even 500 children, one person handling 500 children is absolutely not possible. So that person is so scattered, so spread out that the person is not able to deliver what needs to be done. Therefore, either we improve accessibility or we improve the amount of uh, resources that are available to schools to help the children. According to UNESCO's State of the Education Report for India 2019, India hosts almost 7.8 million children with disability, which is actually considered to be a gross underestimate. A Mumbai-based uh, society, the Spastic Society of India, in fact, estimates that the number of children with special needs is actually at 20 million. And as I had mentioned earlier, this is not just the condition or the statistics from India. Similar statistics are found world over. There are millions and millions of children who need help, and we need to reach out to each of them. Finally, coming to a very, very important area. Like I had mentioned, schools play a very important role in inclusive education. Every child has the right to education. Every child should be allowed to go to school with the compensations that he or she needs to settle down and study. So in that case, uh, here are some concessions which the NCRT lays down, which CBSC board allows children. And this is something that I have often found that parents are not aware of. They don't know that these options are available for their children. So let's talk about this. Facility for a scribe and compensatory time is something children can avail of. If a paper is of three hours, you get 60 minutes extra, two and a half hours, 50 minutes extra, two hours, 40 minutes, or one and a half hours, 30 minutes. And believe me, this does not start at class 10 or 12, which are the board years as of now. But this is something you can start off as early as class one, class two, Whenever you feel child needs some extra help in terms of time or in terms of having someone else write the answers for him while he orally speaks the answer. Believe me, these are two exemptions or concessions that work wonders for the child's confidence, self-esteem, and they are able to actually perform to the optimal level. One important thing to keep in mind is that the age of the scribe or rather the grade level of the scribe has to be lower than that of the child appearing for the test. So if your child is in class six, you can avail of a scribe from class five or four. You cannot have a same class peer or an uh, elder child taking the exam for him. Use of calculator is allowed for children who have SLD specifically dyslexia or dyscalculia because they are not able to manipulate numbers as well. That is the reason we allow them to use calculators so that they are able to perform optimally. Finally, coming to some specific exemptions, there's flexibility in choosing subjects for grade 10 you can choose home science instead of science, fundamentals of computer application in place of maths, painting in place of social science. All this allows a child flexibility. It allows a child who's not good at science or at maths or learning lengthy SST answers to choose something that works for the child. Languages are essential. So two languages are something that the child has to attempt. Alternate questions and even a separate question paper for social science and maths is allowed, especially in case of the visually impaired children. For example, if they cannot read a map, they cannot see a map uh, optimally, they can get an alternate question as well. 
Now, all these are guidelines laid down by CBSC, which all CBSC schools have to follow. So make sure if you have to avail of any of these exemptions, you approach the school, you approach the authorities and work this out for your child. For this, a counselor, a special educator, no one is required. These are things that even a school teacher can easily grant as long as the, uh, the principal permits. So just go that route and help your child. So in the end, all that I'd like to say is that we must get together and solve for these two main issues, inclusivity in schools and, of course, availability of resources so that inclusivity becomes a reality. So let's put our heads together. Let's use platforms like this. This amazing Neurodiversity Summit 2022 is a platform where so many professionals have come together. Let's see what we can do to make the world a better place for all the children. Thank you.